see. All right. Hi, it's Sir Rithkin up in Ontario, and tonight I am here with Duke James the Holy from Glenaubin. Um, I am excited to talk to him because I've heard such great things about you from mutual friends. Um, apparently, you're a very fun guy. I <laughs> thought. Um, so usually I start these things with, um, sort of your origin story, like how you found the SCA and that kind of thing. So if you want to start there, that would be great. Um, so I had friends in high school who, uh, whose older brothers and sisters and stuff played in the SCA. And I was, a uh, you know, a little punker kid. I boxed and, and did other stuff and was into fantasy, uh, novels and Conan and all that. And so they were kind of like, Hey, you should come do this thing. And the times never matched up, but they told me about a convention that was happening. And I was like, okay, cool. I'll do, uh, you know, swing by the convention. And uh, so I did, and they weren't there. So I didn't really have an introduction. Uh, people introduced me to the SCA. So I just kind of, you know, young punk kid there. And at the time, this would have been mid nineties, I guess. They kind of were like, uh, you know, kind of piss off kid, you know, type of thing. Cause I, I was young and I kind of get it, but I was kind of like, screw the SCA, you know? So I kind of went away for a while. And um, several years later, I went to college, got, I graduated from college and uh, was trying to, connect with some gaming friends and stuff that I'd had before and called one up and I'm like, Hey man, uh, you know, let's get together and game. You know, we're doing, starting gaming up again. And, uh, he was like, man, I can't, I got fighter practice. I'm like, yeah, what? He's like, I got fighter practice. I'm like, no, you doing the SCA that pack of dicks. And he was like, Oh, totally. You should come out. And I'm like, uh, man, I don't know, you know, but then I thought about it. I'm like, and thinking about him being in armor, I thought it would be hilarious. So I, so I did, I went out, and I uh, went to the first fighter practice and uh, they put me in armor and started swinging sticks. And I was like, oh man, this is, this is pretty awesome. But I still kind of had a disdain for, for the chivalry and the kind of upper echelon because of the first interaction I had. And so I was like, man, you know, I'm gonna be this like rogue type character and I'm gonna try to rise up and, and, and save these people from these evil, you know, knights and crowns and I had no real understanding of how the SCA worked at the time. And uh, but really pushed, pushed, pushed because I you know, said I had a little disdain for the authority. And um, so three or four months later, uh, we were still principality at the time. When Prince was champion, I thought, all right, I'm rocking and rolling, doing pretty good. And um, get back to our barony and a knight. I'm pretty heavily tattooed, it's kind of hard to tell. Uh, but a knight saw me and he was like, man, you know, you're doing really good. But with all these tattoos and stuff, I don't think you're gonna really going to get anywhere. And I was just like, what? Pack of dicks all over again. So... All it did was really kind of drive me even more, um, you know, and then I met, and then, you know, and it's the South, the Bible Belt, some older nights, and I get it now, and it's just, you know, people didn't want, I don't think that, that image coming in the SCA, some people did, older generation, and, um, but I stuck with it, you know, kept fighting hard, because I'm like, again, I was like, I'm gonna rise up, and I'm gonna, you know, save these people from these nights, um, I met some cooler nights, though, and they were kind of like, oh, you need to pump your brakes a little bit, man, you know, it's, it's just calm down and uh you know be okay and then uh got squared shortly after that and um you know really saw a different version of this yay and uh, thankfully so because i was a i was just a wild renegade i was um, gonna say you hadn't met your people yet right right um so did you start out with sword and shield i did i did um it was kind of one of the things uh, especially in the barony i was in they were uh, you know really push learn sword and shield before you do anything else um and i did that you know, I've done that primarily my entire SCA career. Um, I do fight uh, full arm every now and again. I fight a five foot uh, chopper, the uh, um, you know just a big old bladed chopper. It's hard to explain. Um, so I fight that all. It's, it's kind of my secondary. And in, in wars, I do spear. But yeah. Cool. Um, so what what kind of shield? Um, I, currently, I'm fighting uh, kind of an anterior shield, just a square. Uh, I think it's 23 by maybe 30. Um, prior to that, I was fighting with a, a small center grip uh, kite. Prior to that, an oval. Um, but about every two years, I change it up. It, um, uh, you know, get bored. It's not. It's not to get bored with it. There's just other things you can do, and I kind of want to adapt and learn new things. So. Right. Right. So, it, it sounds like you won this big tourney like right after you started fighting. Is that right? Yeah. 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 Did you understand what you were doing? No, I had no idea. Okay. I had no idea. It was, um, you know, when you joined, I really, yeah, three months in, four months in-ish, I didn't, you know, I barely had any knowledge of how things worked. 
but is, you know, as a fighter, that's what you did. You went out, you fight, you won tournaments. And, uh, and so that's what it was. I was like, you know, and they're like, Prince's champion to me could have been anything. I didn't really know. And, uh, won it. And then, you know, the Prince comes over the time. He's like, Oh, you're going to be my champion. You get to hold the sword and you get to do all this stuff. And I was kind of like, all right, let's do this. And, uh, and thankfully the time, uh, it's now his grace for I do. Um, he he was a very good prince and, and his wife too and they, and they they helped mold me a lot too i mean they were very understanding that i was new and young and um so they really kind of were like hey look you know this is the way things work and and it would really help out if you did this and all that so it wasn't like that they pressured me with everything and they really guided me and, and really influential uh especially later on yeah i was gonna um his wife is brie right correct yeah yeah um yeah she she's pretty cool I, i've never met her in person but over the internet she's been pretty cool um so was that a, a good sort of way for you to hook up with some mentors that way because i mean getting into service like that like having to stand in court right away is is kind of tough oh yeah 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 well and and for me it was um yeah it helped me kind of get known uh, you know because like i said i was brand new so people kind of saw me so you know it, it, it let me get known by other people other than just the fighting you know, and that's, that's kind of what I was lacking. Cause I would show up and again, you know, earrings, tattoos and stuff. So people didn't really want to, you know, associate with me kind of right away. Cause like, Oh, this, you know, kind of thuggish kid. So, you know, there was a lot of, I think in my mind, a lot of disdain for me being there, but it wasn't, you know, it was all in my mind. So it kind of helped people see me like, Oh, this, this guy's, you know, kid's serving and he's doing these things. And, you know, maybe, maybe we shouldn't judge the book by the cover, you know? And uh, so, yeah, it, it definitely helped. Yeah. So did you have some sort of athletic background that sort of gave you a leg up for fighting? I, I, uh, I played hockey a little bit, but I, was, I boxed. Um, I've been boxing ever since I was like 10. Um, boxed all through high school and college. And, uh, and it translates, box, boxing translates very well into the SCA. Um, especially if you break it down to its core fundamentals, you know, footwork, pacing, timing, you know, range. It's uh, a lot of similarities. So do you fight in kind of a boxer style then? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And when I first started, everything was still, I think, kind of stuck uh, in the dark ages because everything was still, you know, this old castle style and you had to do this, and you had to. And, um, you know, and I did that for about a month or two. And I'm like, I'm going to do this other stuff. And they're like, well, and because and I, I guess kind of a blessing because I was new, too, because they were like, I oh, just let him have fun. You know, he's new. Let him have fun. Then I started having success with it. And they were kind of like, oh, well, maybe maybe we ought to, you know, listen to him a little bit. And uh so, I, you know, I, and I adapted because there's things, you know, that you can learn from SCA fundamentals. Absolutely. That, you know, so there's a there's definitely a balancing point. But, yeah, coming coming from the background I did, I think, helped help propel me pretty quick. Yeah, I think um, the whole boxer style and just sort of moving your your feet into more of a um, square position, but not square, like, you know, um, it was like this huge leap in the SCA for for at least for women with power generation. Oh, yeah, um, cuz you don't have to fight with your sword foot forward you just need to get your your hips in what i call neutral um yeah, so yeah. thank you for bringing in boxer style to wherever you were <laughs> so um, it's well and i think it helps with people that have done boxing before just the fear of being hit you know cuz you know you go come to the SCA you know sticks not that bad you know especially if you're only getting hit once you know when you're in a boxing match you know repeatedly uh, getting thumped on you know so that that kind of getting over that fear of that helps a lot too yeah okay um so who did you end up squiring to um i i squared to duke padrug he was count padrug at the time uh he won his crown shortly after i squired to him which you know was a, a good bump again because you know you get to be squired the crown so that helped a lot but part of that i'd had i'd had a couple nights approach me um and but I, again i kind of had a, a you know anti-authority type of attitude so i was kind of you know turned down probably two or three nights um and i and later on became friends with you know a couple of them, good friends one of them uh, especially but um but it lucked out with padrug he's, he's a you know loving to death he's a big goofy guy um and he kind of kind of in that manner kind of calmed me down because i was like super serious and get all amped up and he's just this big goofy loving dude and it helped a lot so did you fall in love with fighting right away or did sort of the the bag of dicks or whatever you called it um, <laughs> put you off? Um, when I first started, so I have, a, I have an arts background. Um, 
uh, I went to art school, graduated with arts degree and stuff. And uh, so when I first kind of come in, like that was the path I was going to take. Um, I, I, I got a green belt, I was doing arts and the fighting was there definitely, but I, but I wasn't solely driven in it because it, at the time, like, you know, there was kind of a lull in our bearing of fighter practice and stuff. So I come out and you kind of see some of the, the substitute teachers of fighting kind of out there. And it's just like, oh, this doesn't look all that great. And then uh, uh, shortly after that, though, you see all these guys gearing up for the crown. And uh, we had, you know, fighter practice would turn into Duke Fest. And uh, so I was like, oh, you know, I'm going to get out and get some of that. So get out and get your lumps and get beat on. And, uh, you know, and that's early on. That's how, you, you know, especially here, kind of how you learn. You just got beat up a lot. Right. Um, but but I dug it. You know, that's kind of kind of where I came from with boxing and stuff like that, too. Yeah. Um, when when you were uh, working hard to get good, um, what did your practice week look like? So I did uh, Sunday practice, Wednesday practice, Thursday practice, Saturday events, um, and in between I would I would do bell work and cardio. Um, so fighting three or four times a week. Um, our our kingdoms I mean, it's not spread out as as much as others, but you know we five to six hours to go to event. So show up Friday night, get up Saturday, fight at the event wake up as early as possible Sunday to drive back home, hit fighter practice, um, fighter practice, you know, wash, rinse, repeat. So, and then that was every week, you know, l- luckily I had a job and uh, was single at the time and stuff. So, you know, everything kind of fell in place for, to be able to do that. That's cool. And so I take it, you never really had a hard time figuring out how to get in the right mental space for attorneys. Did boxing sort of work that out for you? Um, early on, I mean, with the exception of crown. Yeah. Like I never, I never really sweated anything early on. Cause, and, and again, I didn't realize how, how quickly I kind of excelled because I thought, okay, well, you know, this is kind of normal. Um, you know, you get in, you do these things and all that. And it wasn't until the uh, well, yeah. And it, and it's, you know, and so I, looking back on it now, yeah, I'm, I'm, I feel really, really lucky, especially following with some of the trainers that I fell in, fell in with and stuff too. But, um, it was, uh, you know, yeah, won, won some tournaments early on and then, you know, kind of got sidelined too because they're like, oh, well, you know, you're can't fight in these, these like newcomer tournaments and stuff like that. So you got to fight these other tournaments. So I'd step into these other tournaments and just get smoked, you know, which is good too. I mean, it's very humbling, but you, you really, I really got to see like a broader scope because I was like, oh, I'm doing pretty good. You know, I've done this. And then, uh, you know, stepping into some of these other tournaments or other champions tournaments and stuff. Yeah. And just get the ba- uh, brakes beat off of me. So it was, uh, that was good too. Were the newcomer tournaments um, not open to you because you had won a tournament? Is that right? Okay. Right, right. All right. Yeah. Well, that's well. It's always better to fight up, but yeah, um, well, it's understandable. Yeah. It's, it's, and again, at the time, I was kind of cheesed off, but I didn't I had no understanding of the SCA, you know, and, right. and didn't uh, especially the the you know really higher ideals of chivalry and what we're really supposed to be pushing for. So, when did you figure that out? That part of the SCA. Um, probably about a year in, year and a half in, I really started paying attention. Um, cause we were, we were going through the split, uh, for Meridiers and stuff. So I kind of got to witness the, the birth of the kingdom and I got to hear a lot of the complaints and stuff and, and I, you know, and, and of, of why we're splitting. And I, I say, I say complaints, but just, just the heartbreak of splitting, you know? And then I really saw like these people, you know, I, I had to watch nights and I didn't understand that at the time, but I watched these knights from Meridiers who had to break their filthy to their former kingdom because they're now part of Glenavon and, uh, and saw, you know, real emotion, real tears and all that. And I was like, wow, there's, there's really more to this than I thought there was, um, you know, and, and something here that I'm not really appreciating. And maybe I should open my eyes up a little more and get to try to understand these, you know, what's going on. And, uh, and really started talking to people. And uh, if there was an elevation, I would try to do vigil duty so I could sit and watch and listen and, um, and, and you get, you know, and, and even today, and I say there's no greater thing for a person to watch an elevation. You know, it's, it's uh, you know, I'm, I'm like an old Greek lady at a wedding. I just love, them. I love them. I love everything about them, just the raw emotion that comes out. And, uh, and that's, especially with fighters, it's one of the beauty, you know, beautiful things we have is you get to be a rock star from swinging a stick really good. That's it. You swing a stick really good. Don't be an asshole. And you get to be a rock star. And, that is amazing. And you're not going to get that anywhere else in the world, you know? And uh, so, so being able to see that and really understand it, take that in and like, man, just be a cool dude and try to push, you know, do all the crap that you built up in your own head about who these people are 
and uh, you know, and try to be a hero within the system, you know. And, and uh, so yeah, it's it's. Did did your art pass help you um, in that regard as well? Um, in some aspect, because a lot, you know, um, you gotta look good, you know, to be a knight, right? And uh, so that kind of helped. So you know, I paint shields, make my garb, um, and I'd see people too. Uh, you know, this, uh, uh, Duke Cameron is a. Uh, kind of notorious Pinterest famous as we say because you see him every you know good fit guy in his garb everybody talk about Cameron I'm like god damn it I want to look as good as Cameron you know I'm tired of them talking about Cameron all the time so learn to make garb because I want to look good um and then definitely art degrees you know art background help and uh and, and just everything learning to do scrolls because you do a scroll and people hear your name and they come find you and, and they want to talk to you and, and and yet again it's another thing you know a little piece of paper can can make somebody you know so passionate in court when they get this little piece of paper you know and it doesn't really mean anything in the real world but in AOA inside what we do you know and uh, being able to contribute to that uh, you know is a beauty and uh, being able to do that you know having the ability to do that is uh, a beautiful thing so yeah it, it definitely helped in kind of that samurai warrior aspect you know of like you know trying to balance everything. So at what point did you um, decide that that your path was to peerage? Um, you know, I got, I don't, early on, I, I, I don't really know, because it was like, you know, it's just what you did. You fought, you become inspired, you become a knight. Um, don't be an asshole. You know, that was kind of the thing I was taught, you know, and uh, so I was like, okay, you know, I, I'm not going to be a butthead. I, I'm going to fight my ass off, you know, and serve when I can, and uh, hopefully I'll pick up other pieces along the way. And I got, for our kingdom, I got knighted pretty fast. So it was something one thing when they announced me, you know, they announced a good friend of mine the same day and we were kind of the top pack of squires and they announced him. And I'm like, well, I know who the top squire is now, this guy, you know, so I was kind of, you know, ready for that. And then they announced me right after that. And I was like, well, holy shit, because it's supposed to take like 15, 20 years to get knighted, you know, and it, it hadn't been that long. And, um, so that was, you know, came probably quicker than it should because um, there's a lot of development I needed after that, that I got as a knight. Um, but I mean, I, at the same time too, like I still had a lot of energy going for. Um, I'm also a pelican. My passive pelican, I started feeling it though, you know. So I, I was kind of like, wow, okay, yeah. There's there's definitely a struggle people have. Um, so and, and I'm, I'm lucky, I guess, I didn't get that as a squire because I could see how people could get jaded. Are Are you a laurel too? I'm not. I'm not. Not okay. Um, not yet. Not yet. I was gonna say the you're an art degree person. I'm sure it's yeah. it's on the horizon. Um, so when I, when I look at your OP, it looks like you got your AOA in 2005 and then you were knighted in 2008. So was it sort of like a four-year journey for you or? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, and I didn't, you know, I didn't, I, you know, I don't think there's a checklist to, to peerage, but, but in a way there is. And I, and I kind of, you know, I, it's not that I was checking off all the boxes, but those were my goals. Something would happen. I'd be like, all right, what's the next step? All right, I need to do these things. And I hit the next step. All right, I need to do these things. And I hit the next step. So, and, and again, I got lucky. Um, and, and the people I hung around with, you know, especially my, my barony, uh, uh, Duke John the Bear Killer. I, I think you're going to be interviewing lately. You know, he's in our barony. So he, he flat out tell you, if you mess up, he'll choke you to death in your sleep. So having him around, it was a big bonus. So. Well, I mean, four years is fast. So, um, did, what, what part of you didn't feel ready? Um, I, I felt like I needed a more, a bigger connection to the populace. Um, cause when I got, when I got announced, there was definitely a, like that guy cause, cause of the short time period. Um, and just because, I mean, I was known throughout the kingdom, but I was kind of like, Oh, it's James Aholi. You know, he's kind of the prankster guy, you know, and all this other stuff. And, um, I don't think people, because I'm, I didn't really tout like, you know, if you go wash dishes, or clean out toilets, you know, I don't run around like I did these things, you know. So people, people all I really saw me for was, you know, kind of being the, you know, fireside shit talker and stick swinger. Um, so I think, you know, not, not having that connection to the populace, I, I you know, really missed out. on. Um, but, you know, that being said, when I became a knight, that was my driving force. Like, okay, you, you on this day, you don't, or not trying to be a knight. On this day, you have to be a knight. And uh, so I really kind of focused on that. Like, you know, knights, you're a servant of the people. You know, you're a shepherd to everything we do. You've got to go out there. You've got to connect with them. You've got to let them know that you're a hero for them. 
Um, so it's, you know, it's kind of a double-edged sword. At one time, I kind of wish I had it before Esquire, but it really pushed my, my path and my quest after I got knighted, too. Um, I, how did you focus yourself to, to make yourself the knight that you wanted to be? Um, I looked at, you know, the knights that they talk about um, in our kingdom and stuff. Uh, uh, Sir Francois's knight passed away several years ago. But I looked at how people talk about him, uh, Duke Cain, uh, Duke Bear Killer, and several of these other epic figures. And I, I really focused on the stories of these people. And when you hear the stories, very few of them are about how well they fight. It's about their character. Um, and the only legacy, you know, we, we lay our own legacy. We create that legacy, you know. And, and as time goes on, I want to be remembered favorably. You know, so that's that's one thing I looked at. Like, I want people to talk to me, talk about me like they talk about these other people. Um, so I really, you know, and I, and I really started looking at the Knight's Oath and what we do, you know. So when, when I was knighted, I swore the Charlemagne Oath, uh, the Oath of Rome, you know, and I really look at that. And I, and I try to live by that inside the SCA and outside the SCA. But there's, you know, just fundamental things there that's pretty much like be a good person, help people out, you know, don't do bad things. And, and just, and these are all general terms, but, that's really what it is. And, uh, and, and again, I constantly hear all the negative, you know, and you know, more Dukes get kicked out of SA than anybody else. So it's like, I don't want to be that guy for sure. And for every Duke that gets kicked, gets kicked out, I feel like I've got to be five times better to kind of make up for that. And the do same you really thing with think it's more Dukes or do you just think they're more visible? Um, probably a little column A, a little column B, okay. you know? Okay. I just like sometimes I think you know they get a lot of notoriety because of oh, who sure. they are, um, sure. but you know the the bod R and D is a lot of people. Yeah, so, oh yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean it's yeah. You know, I I get what you're saying, but I just like hmm, I don't know. But um, so did you have a vigil then? I did have a vigil, um, okay. and, I'm, and I'm really glad for it. I, I'm uh, I got a lot of good advice. I got some. I got some kind of odd advice um but it it's very humbling having people come in um you know especially these people that people that i didn't know really followed my path um and i you know these people came in i kind of looked at them like wow I, you know I, these are people i look up to like shit i can't let them down you know i, I cannot let her down you know let him down you know so it, it was it was very humbling um do you guys have open vigils can anyone come in and give you advice it's usually the candidate's choice or, or, or the sponsoring peer's choice. Uh, mine was open, um, and, and that's what I wanted because I'm, I'm again I'm I'm very much a, I feel like peer is just servants of the people, and uh, and I think it's you know I think it's good I think it's good for you to, to hear advice, but I think it's also good for people to come in and you know it's almost like they're not accepting you as a peer, but they're seeing you as that peer at that moment. Well, it's it's kind of nice to know what people's expectations are too. Yeah, um, cool. Yeah, I, I like open vigils. I think um, you can learn a lot from people who aren't peers. And oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so, did you do any of like the traditional sort of Morris Keen stuff for your vigil, or? I did. Uh, so they they bathed me in rose water. Uh, come out, bathed me in rose water. Um, found out I was allergic to roses that day. <laughs> um, so uh, that you sucks. Know, well, yeah, it went horribly bad, but, you know, a little rash, a little blistering, but I'm like, oh, that's just the, you know, that's the impurities coming out, right? Um, <laughs> so, you know, but yeah, and then, uh, you know, dressed all in white, uh, barefoot, um, kept me on until uh, the last person was there, and then I did uh, uh, about an hour on my knees, um, just, you know, in silent contemplation, and I had two guards uh, take me to bed to make sure that, you know, I didn't run off in the woods or, or you know, anything like that. So. That's cool. So, did you get any like cool legacy regalia or anything? No, we're still we're still at the time we're still pretty early kingdom, um, and uh, so everything I had was was brand new. Uh, but I mean, it was all you know handmade by people you know very close to me. So. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't matter really what you get because it's um, the SCA is so um, rich in generosity. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. You know? <laughs> The, in a way they're 200 dollars chains and uh, yeah. well in a year about a year after that after i've been knighted uh i'd put my stuff in my car to go to a fighter practice and somebody broke into my car and stole my stuff so i lost i lost all my original regalia with the exception of my knight's chain they found my knight's chain and it had been broken 
um, and I left it broke even to this day. I leave it sitting there. It's kind of remember, you know, it's kind of reminder to me just how frailty everything can be. You know, the, the frailty of what we have. And you really got to, you know, work hard to keep everything, you know, locked in. Yeah. What was one of the best pieces of advice you got? Um, the, there, there was a lot of, a lot of advice that I didn't take. Um, but there, there was there was some people that just come in and, and they were like just remember remember this day and who you are on this day, um, you know, and, and to always kind of keep that that focus of what got you here, you know, and what that drive is. And and I and even to this day, you know, that's kind of where I'm at. I also got told to uh, wear my white belt to the side so when you pee, people don't mistake you for a protege. So that was that was pretty helpful. That's good advice. I, I had never heard that one. Um, cool. Um, so in your kingdom, um, is it culturally acceptable to, for everyone to fight in the crown? Is it encouraged or is it something that people only do um, if they intend to reign? We, early on, um, there was, I think this, you know, unspoken rule that you had to have like, had to have like $10,000 in the bank. And you can only fight if you can, you know, do all these things and you got to be at every event. And um, as quickly as possible, we try to shatter that because it's that's the case for everybody. Crown list should be for everybody. And that, that's my opinion. Some people don't share that, but I've, I've done my damnedest to push crown list to be open for as many people as possible. And over the past probably 10 years, it has been. Um, and early on, we had some crown lists that had 10 or 12 people in them because of that, you know, and we're a small kingdom, but 10 or 12 people in crown list is just, it's, that's, that's bad. Um, and few letters of intent there yeah yeah okay, okay. Um, so but all our our most recent crown list have been like 30 40 people you know we've really kind of broken that 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 uh thought platform that, that you had to have all these extra things because you don't you don't right um you know you, you win and you figure it out and you make it work right like, well in parking them you know geographically we're not that big you know you, you get money to travel with you know we have we have a it's budget in our kingdom it's, it's a lot of money we do too. Uh, yeah, you know, and you have people that come out of the woodwork to help make you garb, you know, and all this stuff. So it's not being crown and, and queen, you know, being king and queen, it's a it's a tough job, but financially just about anybody can do it. Well, I mean that's another another way the SCA is super generous, right? Like people just Absolutely. like Absolutely. come down and lift you up um but when you're crown. So it's it's a pretty neat thing actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so when did you decide that you wanted to win a crown? Uh, not quite right away. Um, but, it, but one time I was like, oh, that's what, you know, that's what I want to do. My, uh, you know, my knight is a count, his knight's a duke, his knight was, you know, was a count. So I'm like, okay, that's what, that's what our line does. I got to win one one day. And, uh, so, I, I mean, early on, I was kind of like really wanting to push for it. Um, but it wasn't, you know, I, I didn't feel early, I, you know, Early, early on, especially, I was like, "Well, I'm not, I'm not ready to sit, you know, the throne of a new kingdom, um, much less like, like, I mean, I'm doing pretty good. I don't want to step into, the, you know, this pack of killers and get thumped pretty bad, you know, and, and kind of ruin what I've got going right now. So, you know, but I, 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 you know, wanted to be crown, so I kind of tried to fight like I was prepping for crown at, at all times, but really, you know, my biggest hurdle was mindset to uh, for crown. But I always kind of always tried to fight like I was fighting for crown, but. It went until later on that I really good really looked for it. So um, let's talk about that. Um, when you say that you're always fighting, like you're going to fight for crown, do you mean training wise? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So what does your your training look like for you to be the best fighter you can be? Um, a lot of it nowadays is cardio because uh, you know it's a, it's one thing that you know we don't SCA didn't really push really is cardio, but a lot of I'm. I'm notoriously uh known for, i'm no, known for long fights like I'll, I'll stretch a fight out as long as i can and pass it there's, there's no shot clock i won a lot of fights that way um you know just because people tire out uh, but uh, but it, you know it, it's uh, a lot of cardio nowadays strength training um i i don't do a whole lot of pill work um but when i do pill work it's for refinement um i, I did uh the reaper challenge recently did that you know which helped a lot because i, I kind of had a two-year break um so doing the Reaper Challenge really helped a lot. Just, just keep getting the muscle memory back and stuff like that. Help the dial and stuff in. But 
Um, I watch a shit ton of videos and I, you know, I'll see somebody throw, you know, something pretty wicked and I'll go out to the pell and I'll try to, you know, reverse engineer how they do it. Uh, I do the same thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fun. <laughs> um, so tell me about your mindset issues. Cause that's, that's something that I'm super interested in. Um, tell me sort of what your path was to like, what was the problem and then how did you overcome it? I did soft final and crown or, or, or you know, semi or final and crown a handful of times. And, um, you know, and people kind of, you know, I had, I had people cheering for me and kind of rooting for me and stuff like that. So I, I think I did two or three second places back to back to back. And, um, uh, and was like, man, there's a hump here. I can't get over. And I knew it was mental and I didn't know what it was. So I kind of started reaching out to people, um, you know, and, and, majority of people I talked to were like, oh, you need a fuck you gear. That's your problem. You're not, you're not amped up enough. You need, you need a killer instinct. And I don't, I just don't have that when I fight. Um, you know, I don't, it, when I, when I, when it turns that corner, I'm like, this is not funny. You know, right. I don't want this to be real fighting. So, you know, and I'm like, well, I don't know how I'm gonna, I don't know how I'm going to escape this. You know, I don't know how I'm going to get past this. And uh, actually started talking to Duke Tamiki about it a little bit. Tamiki's like, look, everybody's got the fuck you gear, man. Sometimes you got to look at the opposite of that. Sometimes you got to tell yourself that you're the last person, you know, that's defending the people from tyranny. And that's, that's kind of the way you got to look at it. It's, you got to look at your opponent like, oh, you know, this guy, he, he might not be the best crown, so you, you're the last defense, you know. And that kind of mental shift, which was a me weird mental shift, because sometimes you're fighting people that you really love, but you got to kind of look at it and be like, oh, man, like, but what if? And uh, so that helped a lot. Uh, it also helped that, I, you know, I, I was going to take a couple br breaks from Crown because I was just getting so emotionally invested. You know, I'd fight, come in second, go home, and people were like, oh, maybe next time. We were really rooting for you. And then for like a week, I'd feel like shit, you know. And then the next, you know, next Crown roll around, you know, same thing. The next Crown roll around and same thing. And uh, so I'm like, I'm going to take a break because I'm just getting emotionally wrapped up. And, you know, I'm hurting. My feelings are getting hurt. And it's all my fault, and that's not good for me. It's not good for society. It's not good for my people. And uh, so the, the crown I was going to take a break from. Some friends of ours, good friends of ours, were on the throne, and he told me he's like, "Man, we only got like eight letters of intent." And I'm, I'm like, "Oh, that's not. I can't have that. You know, cause we need big crowns." Because I always push for that. So I put my letter in, and uh, he was a lying asshole because we had like 32 people in crown list. Um, but I was like, "Hey, I'm just a number. I'm just here to make us look good." And uh, kind of had that just, you know, I'm going to relax through this. And then I won the, you know, won the winner's bracket. And uh, it's the first time I'd ever done that. I'd always been in the finals the hard way. And uh, so I got in the winner's bracket and uh, or got into the finals of the winner's bracket. And I'm like, wow, that's a hurdle jump. So I like, I've, I've already won today. I've already done something I've never done before. I've already won the day. Doesn't matter what happens. And then uh, I drew my knight in the finals, um, who I've been fighting my entire SCA career. So I'm like, wow, I'm a leg up. All right, I know this guy. And, uh, and then I started thinking like, oh, Tamiki, Tamiki, focus on Tamiki lessons, you know, and, uh, and started doing that and it, it made a huge difference. Did you win that one? I did. I did. I did. So, yeah, it, it's interesting um, how, when you let go, um, you can let yourself be you, right? Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, it's interesting too, like, you know, people mean well and, um, and it's nice to have their support, but you put on yourself um, that you're letting them down. That's what it sounds like to me. Um, oh yeah. And yeah, and it's really you that is putting that on you, right? I don't know. Absolutely, absolutely. It's interesting though, because because it is. It's like sort of um, it's, a, you, it's a lot of pressure. Um, so your friend did you a huge favor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Um, Super cool. And meeting your knight in the finals, I mean, that's that's excellent because you know, you know you're gonna get a good fight. You know the guy. Oh, uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So well, and, and the big thing to me is knowing like, okay, like I know his calibration, I know he's not gonna be thick, you know, so you don't have that running through your head, you know, and he's always a fun fight, he's always laughing and smiling, you know. So yeah, it was it was the the perfect storm for relaxation. And, uh, and feeling that after the first time, I'm like, oh, wow, there it is. That's, that's what it is. That's what you're trying to achieve every time. Yeah. yeah. So um, tell me about raining that first time. Um, it, it, the first rain was, was uh, interesting. We had a lot of hurdles we had to jump through. Um, we, we had some, some banishments we had to do that were unfortunate. Um, 
to come through. So that, you know, seeing the dark side of the SCA kind of immediately, our coronation day on the drive home, we get a phone call of some, you know, people being arrested and some stuff happening. So we were like, oh, wow, that's, that's, that's pretty horrible, you know, so dealing with that. But we had, we kind of hit in a, in a really high time in the kingdom. I think we made 22, 23 peers our first reign. Oh, wow. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was, that was the, you know, a real high point for us because like, holy crap, we get to, you know, do all these cool things. So even as bad as it is, you go to the next event and, and you know, have counsel and all of a sudden you start hearing all this positive stuff about people and you're like, all oh, the BS kind of washes away. Um, so it was, it was very eye opening. That and, and it's kind of the uh, SEA opening up to social media and uh, you know, SEA doesn't turn off now. You know, there's, there's no off button for the SEA with everything. So experiencing that as crown w- was a real eye opening too. But Again, with you know, you take the good with the bad. So, yeah. Um, so, what was your favorite part of reigning that first time? Um, man, there's so much. There's so much. You know, we, we got to make the uh, first order of defense. Um, that was that was a huge, huge thing. Um, our kingdom had just started doing uh, online award recommendations at the time. And that was, uh, I, I'd have a shitty day at work. I'd go home and read award recommendations. Cause that, that was just, that to me was just the best. Cause you, you're reading all these wonderful things about people from other people, you know? And, and sometimes they wouldn't even know. Them. They're like, hey, this guy did this really cool thing. I don't know him all that well, but here's why he's cool. Here's why he's special. And that, that was, was the best, I think. It's just seeing people talk really nice and really good about other people. That, that's what Adamar said last night too. I, I think that's really, really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what was the most surprising thing? Uh, all the little extra stuff that I didn't realize had to happen. Like I'd been on, you know, retinue a couple of times and stuff like that. Um, Gulf Wars especially because we're the hosting kingdom. Um, but yeah, it was just like, wow, there's there's a lot that you that goes into this. Um, and and that was kind of eye opening so and it, and it was definitely like learn to delegate and uh learn to trust your consort learn to trust your people you know and and, and the same they need to trust you you know and, uh, but yeah have, having a good retinue and having a good consort and just uh, not sweating the small stuff you know what's your um favorite kingdom tradition um we do in our crown list we do a banner of valor and a wreath of chivalry so the, the wreath of chivalry is given by the queen for the most chivalrous person on the day. Um, and I really like that. And the banner of valor is given by the, the king on the, the person who fought the uh, most epic of fights. So that, 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 that's probably a good one. Um, those two, I uh, love those. Um, our queens buffet the uh, masters of defense. I love that. You know, good, good solid backhand with a glove. That's cool. Um, but there, there's a lot. We have a lot of theater too. Our crowns die off. You know, and, and our, and our step-up ceremonies are always different. They're always themed to the rain. So, you know, the big theater that we do, you know, I love that. Cool. Um, so you took a little bit of time before you won your next crown. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I had, was- uh, two years, I think, two years. I had yeah. a knee injury. Um, so I fought the very next one. I had some knee problems and some shoulder problems. Fought the next one. Um, and did, 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 did not do as good as I wanted to. But that, you know, again, yes. stepping in, trying to mental focus, yeah. And then uh, the one after that had uh, got about halfway through the list and my shoulder just gave out. And I'm like, look, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing anybody any, any you know, good here. Um, so I withdrew from the list, uh, t- took one off, and then, uh, and then came back. And I think I won the draft. How did you rehab yourself? Um, I got a really good physical therapist. Okay. But, yeah. So you took the time. Oh yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Okay. I was trying to avoid surgery because so many times you hear people having a surgery. So no, I went ahead and bit the bullet, got a good therapist, worked through Was it. Was it fighting related, your shoulder? No, old injury and, and just okay. being like way overweight, just bad diet and bad lifestyle and stuff. Okay. Um, so what role does your consort play on tourney day for you? Um, they're the shining star. You know, I don't want them to to do anything but be the shining example you know that that's the day for me to kind of come out and uh honor them um 
you know, especially my wife, you know, to kind of come out and uh, uh, be the be the knight that she deserves, you know, and, and be the person she deserves and be the fighter she deserves. And, uh, so I want them to, you know, I want her to be able to sit back and, and, and uh, be the rock star and, and relax and uh, take in the moment. Because that's, so many people forget that about crown. They look at crowns and it's always about the, the fighter or the king. The queens are, are, you know, a lot of times so overlooked and consorts especially. It's uh, one thing we do in Glenavon is uh, the day of crown list, they host a consort's breakfast for everybody, every consort. So they all get to sit around and talk with the queen and have a, you know, a really special moment that morning. And, uh, you know, that's, that's what, the, that's what it should be about, right? It should be a, a parade of uh, virtue uh, for the consorts. Right. Right. It, you know, cause that's how we started, right? It's a, oh, absolutely. yeah. The queen of love and beauty and whatever. Um, yeah, I, I don't remember who I was talking to, but, um, I've always wanted somebody in a crown to have it like, not like James, the Holy fighting, but the fighter fighting for, you know, Duchess, whoever, I don't, I'm sorry. I don't know your lady's name, but, um, I just think it would be kind of cool. Take the focus off the fighter. Um, anyway, so what about your, your second crown? Why don't you tell me about how your day went that day and how it felt and how, if it felt different? Um, so we, our kingdom is, uh, we're called the Stormborn Kingdom because we were, we were kind of born out of Katrina. Um, you know, so we started pushing that. We're like, you know, it's that's the Stormborn Kingdom, you know, the, the Stormborn, the Stormborn. So that had kind of taken off and, and that day it started storming and stuff like that. It was raining really horrible and uh, super muddy. But uh, somebody came up to me and I'm like, well, this is what you wanted, Mr. Stormborn. And I'm like, you know what? It sure is. You know, and I, I really kind of bit into that. I'm like, this is who we are. This is where we came from, you know. And, and uh, you know, just kind of kind of drove myself in that, with that. So, so somebody wanted to know if you're a righty or a lefty. I'm right hand. I'm right hand. Okay. And did you win your, win your second crown with your kite? Uh, I, I won my first crown with my kite. I won a second crown with, my, with an oval. As a noble. Okay. Um, still center mount though, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Do you, do you like center mount better than side mount? Yeah. Cause I, I punchy punchy and snatchy snatchy. And um, so, yeah. I like the snatchy snatchy too. <laughs> um, so, but, but you say that you, you, you draw um, fights out. So are you a more defensive fighter then? Um, only in the aspect of range. Um, I don't, I don't want to be close enough to get hit. So I really try to watch range. I really try to watch footwork, um, you know, maintaining the center line while keeping them off the center line, you know, and little nuances, uh, you know, you know, a move here, see what they do, see if their foot moves, see if their doesn't, foot doesn't move, you know, so it's a lot of really body reading before, you know, I, before lay on for me. Um, you know, that's, that's kind of how I, I approach it, you know. Cool. Um, so your second reign, um, how was it different than your first reign? Did did you have an idea of something you wanted to do? Did you? I wanted, um, yeah, our first reign, you know, I felt like we'd done so much, we, you know, we made a bunch of peers and, and got to, you know, we introduced some new awards and stuff. So the second reign was like, all right, we're going to try to ride this wave that our kingdom was on. You know, we're, we're, kingdom was in a really good spot, so let's ride this wave. Um, and, 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 you know, everything's kind of going great. Our, uh, we host our crown. We, we do year-long reigns. So we, you're you know, prince and princess for six months and then crown for six months. So we have a crown list about about a month after we step up. So stepped up, had crown list. Um, and some friends of ours won. And we were really excited. First time crown, super young guy. And a couple months later, they had some uh, problems and stuff like that. So they had to abdicate. Oh. Um, so they abdicated right before Gulf Wars, which is, you know, having us being a host, you know, a lot of stuff gets delegated out. So that was kind of a, kind of a hurdle uh, to get past, but um, our coronation, uh, coronation was delayed by hurricane. Um, so we had to do that. So it was, it was a lot of things back to back to back, but you know, it, it's, it's all water under the bridge because all, all the good you get to see and everything like that stuff's, you know, nothing. So did you have to run a second crown list then? We did uh, a crown list coronation on the same day, okay. same day. So, um, is an easy way to do it. We, we kind of limited that list a little bit just because like you don't have that learning curve or that learning experience from being prince and princess. So we limited that list. Um, but I think we still have 16, we have like 16, 17 people in. Um, well, that's, that's smart though, because you're right. They don't, you, if you have that six month lead up built in for, you know, 
good transitions, well, I'm guessing. Yeah, a lot of things, you know, a lot of things that you don't, you know, that you can't tell people stepping in is too, you know, but they're, you know, the next crown that stepped in, there was four banishments that had to be done that day. And you don't want to tell somebody who's brand new, like, hey, you win this crown, you have to do these things. Yeah, by so, the way. Yeah. So it's kind of, you know, it's kind of one of them things. Like, we knew that stuff was coming down the pipeline. So it was like, wow, we really got to, you know, we don't want to soil somebody's experience. So um, somebody asked a really good question. Um, they said, your grace, do you feel that your flow with fighting is similar to your flow with your art? Yes, absolutely. Um, so could you describe that? I think uh, when you create, uh, a lot, and a lot of artists do this too, you have to be in a certain mindset to create. You got to put yourself in that mindset or you got to look at things, um, lay them out on the table and, and look at what you have and how you want to piece things together. So it's the same way on the fighting tip. Um, when you're out there, you've got to look at the fight. You've got to look at your opponent, how he's moving, the terrain, what's going on, how they're breathing, how you're breathing, you know, where you're at. And, and you've got to read the flow of everything before you put it together. So, yeah, I mean, it's very, there's very much a connection there. Cool. So um, tell me about your Pelican. Did you get that before your Dutchie or after? Um, I got it after my Dutchie. Um, okay. I, I, a lot of it was, was uh, fighting related, but I've, I've, you know, autocratic events. We, we do an event here, a tournament of champions. So we run a point system throughout the year. Um, so every tournament you win is worth a certain amount of points. Some tournaments worth more points. So at the end of the tournament season, we take the top 16 point holders and hold a grand tournament. Oh, cool. Um, so I kind of, I ran that for, I ran it for about a decade, um, provided prizes for it, kind of pushed for it. Um, so that that was one big thing. I, I uh, recently I raised uh, about ten thousand dollars to to fix the Ford at Gulf Wars and stuff. So I did a shit ton of fundraising, um, feast. I'm, I'm known for taco socials and tequila tastings and Fine. You know, I'll, do, I'll I'll do anything. You know, I'll I'll put anything out there to, to try to help benefit the SCAs. So I love that that tournament format. We did something similar in Ontier, um, but we didn't at the end have a. a you know, the top 16 have a tourney. And I think that's super cool. Um, I might have to steal that. Um, yeah. Did you, did you, is that something that is traditionally always done in your kingdom or did you sort of put it together to have a better tourney circuit or? Um, it, it was to get a tourney circuit. So they started it before I was a knight um, and they kind of had it to where you had to win tournaments to get invited in. So the first year they did it, they had these goblets. You won, if you won a goblet, you got in. Um, but they had like four guys winning all the tournaments. Um, so like, well, that's not going to work. So the next year, they're like, all right, if you win a goblet, you're in, but you can't fight anymore. So that was, you know, bad for Squires because if they won a tournament, well, now they can't fight in tournaments. So to um, and then I got knighted right after that. And I'm like, hey, guys, let's really look at a system that, you know, is A, going to promote fighting and uh, B, keep people in the tournament circuit. So we looked at, you know, honestly, I took it from NASCAR. I'm like, okay, how do they do the point, you know, point scoring for NASCAR? Somebody kind just... of modified that. <laughs> yeah, modified that. Um, we took all the peerages um, and let them have, you know, champions. We have, we have a champion for every peerage. If you win those tournaments, you get automatically in. Um, but aside from that, it's just points. You know, get out there and grind. And it benefits the young guy. You know, if a young guy, you, you get a point for entering a tournament. Well, if you do 30 tournaments a year, that's 30 points you've earned. Right. You know, so it benefits them too. Right. And it makes it so that you have really good tournaments. So oh, it's a win-win, right? Like, and it's yeah. better fighting. And um, yeah, I, I love that idea. We're so big and on tier that it's hard to um, have tournaments that, I mean, we have one tournament in January that's like 150 people or something like fighters, but we don't have anything else all year that's like that. And um, I think a, the tournament circuit is such a great way to get people to to hone in on the same thing. Well, and we maintain a website so you can check in on your points and see who's won what. So it's always, you know, it's always that race to the points. Yeah. That's cool. That's, I really like that. Where do you throw the um, interny? Um, how do you mean? Like what, what event? Is there always the same event where you have the last? Six it's, it's so, so every event, you, you, what we set it up is every group can host one uh, qualifying tournament is what we call it and then we have we have uh, a tournament of champions event okay that we do you know the big tournament of champions at and uh so we we have uh two spots available that day so we have you know 
you show up and, and you can fight. And if you win that tournament, you get in. And then we let all the, the Shire champions and stuff. We have an invitational only tournament for them. So you have to be a Shire or a Bronio champion or something to fight in that too. So it gives a little more, a uh, little more umph to being a Shire champion. That's cool. I like that a lot. So somebody said something about a taco cart. So do you do a taco cart? We're, yeah, we're making taco carts. We're going to start, uh, start taking taco carts around to events. Is, uh, what events don't need more tacos? Right. We had somebody up here who did a, a hot dog cart um, that she took around, you know, drunk a clock. So that uh... <laughs> I'm all for a taco cart. That's awesome. Is that uh, part of know, racing never, or is it just something to do? Well, never turn down the chance to be a hero, right? That's so. Uh... <laughs> is it fundraising though, or is just you want to do it? I think it's just a thing like let's uh, especially coming out of uh, coming out of the pandemic and stuff. I think it'd just be nice to be able to, you know, have have something there for people to kind of rally around, you know. That's that's super cool. Um, I, I you sound like the kind of guy like you get ideas and you just make it happen. Is that right? Yeah, that's super cool. I mean, that, it, it, when you when you're that kind of person and then you get a pelican, it sort of feels like you didn't do the work. Almost. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't know if you feel that way. That's how I felt when I got my Pelican. I was like, I, I just did things that I wanted to see happen. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I don't know, like, anyway, um, super cool. Okay. So what, what was the best thing about your last reign? Um, I, tra I traveled a lot more last reign. Um, and, and I really, because before, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really bad in like, uh, in hoity affairs. So like a lot, you know, the first rain, I didn't do a lot of the, the big boil stuff that, that I really should have done. Um, so the second rain, I'm like, all right, I really need to, really need to uh, start doing this stuff. So I went to Penzik, you know, is, is air and I uh, kind of traveled, tried to travel outside more and stuff like that. And I, and I built a, a connection with people that I, I probably wouldn't have if I hadn't done that. Um, Are you shy? Like, is it stepping out of your comfort zone to do that or? It's not that I'm shy. It's just that I'm sometimes worried that I'm not a certain type of person. You know, I, I'm not the, the right brand of person for certain people, you know, because sometimes I can come across as, uh, well, sometimes I am, I'm just straight up crude. Um, I speak my mind a lot. I, I, you know, I, uh, just don't know when to shut up sometimes, you know, so it's kind of get, getting in those, the royal functions. I don't want to embarrass the kingdom. I don't want to embarrass my consort. So it's like, just keep your mouth shut, just smile and nod. And uh, so it's, it's more of that. All right. So why don't we look at your killing tool? Do you have yeah, a... I do. So I fight with a, just a 30 inch um, basket hilt. Uh, it's just regular tan. I don't do anything to it. It looks like shit right now. Um, but that's it. And uh, I've got one here without the handle. Um, so you Did you say see. that was 30 inches? Because it looks a lot longer no, than no, that. No, no, 38 oh. inches. Oh, 38. 38. Okay, because yeah, I was like, 38. really? 37 <laughs> with a thrust. Okay. Um, I do my, my handle kind of like a, a baseball diamond. Um, so it's got like a little groove for my fingers. Um, I have, I don't have any feeling in half my hand. Um, so it helps, you know, know with blade, orient blade orientation and stuff like that. I don't taper it at all. I, I need the, the bottom to be as thick as the top because I don't have that feeling. So I don't want to extra squeeze and stuff. Um, I, I do use a trigger uh, kind of for that too, to keep it from flailing out of my hand. Um, so that's, yeah, that's nothing, you know, I don't play and I, I try to get the Britannia as close as I can. Um, and I fight with a, the chopper. So that's, that's, Okay. yeah that's fun so do you, how many how many fingers is your trigger is it just one or two uh three fingers i do three fingers so i can feel with these two fingers i can't with this one so i, so I want to you know get them in there so you know make sure everything's kind of locked in there. okay so did did we skip anything that you want to talk about before we i don't think so okay i I feel like you're very interesting and I'm missing something, but that's okay. I'm missing the opportunity because uh, you were going to be in my camp at Gulf Wars. I don't know if you knew that or not. 
I didn't know so, that. Yeah, the camp, uh, the camp you're staying in is is uh, one of, is the camp that I'm in. So I feel like I missed out on opportunities. So. Well, we are planning on coming back um, awesome. whenever we can because I I was super excited to go finally, um, and then yeah, so um, that's cool. I, I love that. I love hosting people. I love taking around, especially at Gulf Wars and showing them all the cool shit and all that. So yeah, I can't wait. All right. Well, next time we come, we will stay in that camp and we will actually hang out and eat tacos or something. All right. So the final 10, if you could fight anyone in the world, who would it be? Um, man, there's so many people. Um, I, I love fighting Aelon. So I want to get with Aelon more. I've never fought Branos. I know that's like everybody wants to fight Branos, but I really want to get Branos. Um, I feel like, because uh, I worked with Aeon a lot, so I feel like I was learning from Luke, so I want to go to Yoda. You know, that's that's my next step. <laughs> I love that analogy. That's great. <laughs> Almost as good as the the old Greek lady at the wedding. That was awesome. Um, yeah, well, there's a reason why everyone wants to pipe around. Sorry, my dog is just needing. Who would you like to see reign in your kingdom? Uh, Nikita. Um, she was my squire. She uh, recently got knighted, but uh, I'd love to see her. She's uh, she doesn't realize it, but she helped me make uh, helped me become the knight that I am. So we were squire siblings together for a while. Um, she eventually took my belt um, uh, when some stuff happened and all that. But I would love to see her. So so tell me about how she made you the knight you are. Like like what kind of influence did she have on you? She's a she's a very grounding force, um, and there's. There's a maternal nature that knights should have that, that some don't. Um, and it's just a, a, a more caring side. Um, sometimes we get caught up in the chest beating bravado of, of the stick game and stuff like that. And uh, especially she had, a, she had as a son and uh, before she got pregnant and stuff like that, we'd fight all the time and all that. And she kind of, you know, helped push me that way because we fought constantly. Um, and then after she had her kid and came back to my squire belt, but she just had you know, there's something different about her. And it was that maternal nature to her. And, uh, you know, she kind of helped, helped me look at things in a different way um, and just care different. Um, but yeah, she's, she definitely grounded me and, and uh, gets me to bite my tongue a lot. So. She's someone I'd like to get to know a little bit better. Um, she's, she's one of the best person. people I know. Yeah. Um, okay. If you could talk stick with anyone in the world for an hour, who would it be? I get that opportunity now with social media and stuff. So it's kind of hard to say. Um, I, I would love to go to coaches kind of outside of what we do, you know, uh, uh, jiu-jitsu coaches and boxing coaches and stuff like that and just see see what they could offer or see their take on it, um, especially for longevity in our sport, you know, what we could do to, uh, you know, keep, keep ourselves healthy opposed to just, you know, how, how well we can swing the stick. But I think that's what I would do. That would be cool. Um, what is your favorite medieval-esque or period movie? Conan, by far. Which one? Uh, the original one. Okay, the original. original. Probably second place would be like Excalibur because I had a huge crush on naughty Ellen Mirren in that. So. Well, how could you not? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Um, if you could add a rule to the list or subtract a rule to the list, what would it be? Uh call your shots yeah you know i think rules are pretty good just yeah call your shots yeah um what's your favorite tournament format um i like bear pits and i like uh our crown lists or best two out of three double elimination um so i like both of those. what's your favorite event uh golf wars yeah i'm gonna get there i'm gonna get there um <laughs> If you could have any helmet in the world, regardless of cost, what kind would it be? Um, I would become a fat white samurai just to see what Ren and Ugo could do with a samurai helmet. Nice. See, I I would do the same thing, but not samurai. I would like do Greek, and I'd just say artistic license. You just oh yeah, no kidding. Like, yeah, those guys are are so skilled. Um, it's Saturday morning at Estrella. And several people want to talk to you about last night. What did you do? Oh my god! I have horrible Estrella stories. <laughs> like, like I've done some like really raw stuff at Estrella, so I, I don't. And I'm like not proud of a lot of it, but okay. Oh, I've, I've done so much. 
we put like beef bouillon cubes and shower heads and like Kool-Aid packets and gloves. And you always get that one asshole at a party, you know, so you follow him around so he's in the porta john and you zip tie that bastard shut. So it's yeah, and there and, and that's like yeah, I've done some horrible things. All right. You're that guy. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> but that's fine. Um, who is your favorite fight ever? I fought uh, Duke Radu in one of our crowns for there's about an hour and fifteen minutes of footage from uh, from our fight. Um, for one round. Uh, it was tennis rules. You had to win by two. Um, so they got an hour and 15 minutes of footage of it before before the, the video cut off. So I think we fought for like an hour and 20 minutes in one round. So did you that, have to win two in a row? You had to win by two. Oh, um, oh. So like if I won one and then he won one, and then that means I would have to win three, you know, one to even us up and then two again to beat. Wow. Yeah, it was it was uh it was a horrible experience, but one I will never forget. That that's crazy. Yeah. So how how long the video is an hour and fifteen minutes? How long did it go? I think it was an hour and twenty minutes, hour and twenty twenty five minutes. So was, I mean, they, they almost got the end of the video, almost got the entire fight. And I say fighting it was a lot of stalking, really. Because Raju's a very tall guy, I was fighting Florentine, so I would turtle up and kind of trudge along. But yeah, it was uh it was memorable for sure. I was gonna like mentally that would be exhausting i think absolutely absolutely wow um who's the cleanest fighter in your kingdom uh william a good lion by far that guy he calls everything and he's a phenomenal fighter too i think because of it um because he yeah you, you can hit him you know and, and if it just scrapes and he's like yeah good and uh and you can try talking him out of it but he's like it's only gonna make me better you know so it's like his victory condition he can't get hit or something yeah yeah well, thank you very much for talking to me. I've really enjoyed it. Um, hopefully, I will uh, see you in person at Golf Wars next year. I hope so. And thank you for doing these. I mean, you, you know, it, it's cool that people get to get to see, you know, aspects of Dukes and stuff. And then, like, I think a Duke doesn't get to talk about himself for, like, longer than a month. He goes insane. So that's, like, really cool, too. So thank I you just, a lot. It's super cool to to meet people from all over and – you know, there's there's similar threads in your stories that, about um, how passionate you are about fighting and how much time you've dedicated. But there's also like the stories are so divergent. Um, it's it's pretty it's pretty cool. So I really appreciate you participating because if you didn't participate, I would have no one to talk to. So thanks everyone for watching. Uh, tomorrow I am interviewing Duke Ulf, who um, it should be interesting because he reigned in Drakenwald while living in um, South Africa. So um, lots of flying there. So that'll be super fun. So thanks again, Your Grace. And um, you. see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.